Welcome to this week's Today's Health and Wellness Podcast. This is Brett. And I'm Ashley. The Today's Health and Wellness Podcast is a joint effort of the Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine and Today's Health. In each week's podcast, we spotlight health and wellness stories you'll find in the magazine, on Today's Health web pages, on our social media, as well as extras you'll hear only in the weekly podcasts. Thanks for subscribing and hitting the play button. Let's get started. Ashley, have you ever heard of a preschool center that included older adults? No, I haven't, but that sounds like a really great idea. Now, they do exist. I got to talk to Karen Burwell, who is the administrator at Kitty Grand Intergenerational Learning Center in Dublin, Ohio. The preschool is inside the Grand Senior Living Center, and every day the young and old are coming together to teach one another. Here's my interview with Karen. <music> Let's talk a little bit about what intergenerational learning is. What is what's the definition of this concept, and, and where did it begin, and, and and how did it begin here at the Grand? Well, intergenerational learning is basically the two generations meeting, doing activities together um, for the benefit for both parts. The child getting the benefit of the experience with the older generation plus the older generation having that young person kind of brighten their day. Um, as far as the concept of where it started, it's not very common. Um, I'm not exactly sure where it started, but I know that the owner uh, of the grand, Mr. Vrabel, had grandchildren who attended one in the Cleveland area, and he really thought his grandchildren got a lot out of the program. And so he wanted to see it come to the grand here. What happens during um, the school day, quote unquote, between the, the kids and the residents? Um, the children have a normal school day. They do. We do lesson plans, but we incorporate the intergenerational activities into our lesson plans. So, for instance, um, next week we're doing something on transportation. So. Instead of just talking about cars, planes, trains, we're actually going to do what we call Zoom painting with the residents where we'll cover the tables with paper and we'll take little cars and dip them in paint and roll them around on the paper to make tracks and stuff. And what will happen is you'll see the kids doing some of the work and then you'll see the residents trying to help the children make a straight line or, or a zigzag line and then you'll see the children helping some of the residents who have problems with their uh, motor skills to hold the cars. They'll hold their hand of a couple of our residents who um, maybe have Parkinson's and have a shaky hand or we have um, a couple people who are in wheelchairs and basically can just um, – talk to us, I guess, with their eyes and a little bit of vocal. And so they'll hold their pictures up, let them see it, and it just kind of brightens their day, and the kids get a big um, kick out of making the residents smile. So, This looks to be like a, a very positive, non-traditional environment for the kids. Yeah, we don't. Um, this is something that when my families come for tours um, – it pretty well sells our program. If they haven't heard about it before, they're very interested. Um, you know, they do have concerns about uh, making sure that we don't cross contaminate anybody with, you know, the little kids germs and the adults germs. And so when we have issues with flu bugs and things like that, we communicate. Um, we had flu at the nursing home probably a month ago. And so for a couple of days, we just didn't do activities. And if we had the same thing in the daycare, we would, you know, stop coming for a couple of days. So um, what's been the effect on the residents, some specific examples that um, uh, have been uh, really eye opening and just like, this is the right thing to do. The residents, um, one of the biggest um progressions, I guess we, I could say, is it is with our dementia and Alzheimer's, which we call memory care. Um, those residents go from sitting in a daze to smiling and laughing with the kids. They, um, we do, we do some cooking activities. The only issue we have with cooking activity is nobody wants to finish the product. They want to eat it before it's finished. But they do, we, we try to make everything in baggies and things like that so we don't have to worry about, you know, if someone eats off of their 
plate before it's finished, it's fine. But um, we see the residents helping the kids because a lot of those patients are not um, disabled, but their memories are bad. Um, but they do enjoy doing activities. Um, and the funny thing about it is the kids don't realize that they don't remember them, but they'll say to me, how's come Martha doesn't remember my name today? And so we talk about the fact that their, their memories are not as good. They're kind of like when we test you with your ABCs and you can't remember what letter C is. So we, we talk about the similarities between the kids. Now, the other end of the nursing home where it's the um, uh, full-time nursing home um, where patients are here, you know, this is their last home, um, they just uh, brighten up because they see the kids every day. And a lot of them don't see what would probably be their great-grandchildren or their great-great-grandchildren. You know, we have a lot of distance in our families now, so this is kind of a nice visit for them. And they, they love to um, reach out, you know, shake hands with the children or, or sometimes give them a hug or things like that. We don't ever force the children, but most of our children um, know a lot of the residents by name. And so they'll come up to them and say, how are you today? And things like that. So how many students do you have enrolled right now and, and the future? Um, we have, about, I think we have 28 as of today. Um, our license capacity is 43. Um, we average about 20 a day because we have a lot of part time with the nursing staff here and the, you know, other departments that are part time. Um, we can go to 43 with our license. Um, but, um, the owner is willing to knock out a wall if we need it at some point and we're hoping we get there. So. The resident's involvement is a, a, a specific resident. Is it a daily uh, involvement or once a week? How, how does that uh, schedule out for you? We have a daily activity somewhere, either upstairs with activities or downstairs with memory care. And then we have um, our 12-month to 3-year-old group. They actually go out in wagons two, three times a day for walks throughout the building too. So, So it's at least a daily activity. So, and your age group range for the uh, students? Um, we start at twelve months, and at this point, we're going to about third or fourth grade. The only thing would be that um, a lot of the activities really help with boredom for the residents because they have something to engage in through the day. So, well, I can see this. Um, being really positive for the young ones to, you know, develop of some respect um, as well as understanding the generational gap that we sometimes don't see now. Uh, just our, our lives have changed. We just don't have grandma and grandpa in the house anymore. Um, I'm seeing, I can imagine you seeing it very positive on both sides of the residents and the students. Yeah. We, you know, we have a lot of kids who, um, we have a family from Tokyo. We have one from Brazil. We have one from, Colorado and one from, I think it was North Carolina or South Carolina. So their families are not here. So they don't really know anybody. Um, one of our, well, I guess we have one from Pittsburgh too. Um, the Pittsburgh family, um, dad gave me a really big compliment for our program the other day. He said when they moved here, they didn't know where to go. They came here, they felt welcome. They never even looked at another center, started here and they're very happy with it. They're very happy with the intergenerational concept. Plus, they're, we're small enough that the kids can still, we can still have siblings visit each other in the different rooms at different times a day so that they don't have to be completely apart all day. So, What's a little bit of your background? Where, do you, where have you come from before this time? Well, I've been in about every field of child development there is. Um, I was a resource and referral director for about 15 years. Before that, I owned a preschool. I owned a daycare. I've worked for Migrant Head Start. Um, I've done some independent contract work for Step Up to Quality. And five years ago, um, I went to work, or about seven years ago, I went to work for um, an intergenerational program and really bit the bug there and uh, wanted to continue there when we moved to Columbus. So.
Thanks again for listening to this week's Today's Health and Wellness podcast, brought to you by Central Ohio Health and Wellness Magazine and Today's Health. If you have a health and wellness segment you would like us to cover, send us an email. Our contact information is in the show notes. And if you'd like more information about sponsoring our podcast, like Ashley just mentioned, our contact information is in the podcast notes. We look forward to hearing from you. Circle270media.com 